Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see so many wonderful people in the room joining us today. Congratulations, Kristen, and all your colleagues for this amazing turnout. Can I get more wine, Carol? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this goes on all the time. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Bill Clapp, and I'm one of the founders of Global Washington, and my wife Paula and I are here today to present the 2017 Global Washington Global Hero Award. We do this this year with a heavy heart as our honoree, our hero, was a dear friend of ours. This year the community lost a wonderful individual who made a positive impact on dozens of international nonprofit organizations. He was the proverbial man behind the scenes who made so many good things happen with his skills and his uncanny judgment of people. Tom Waldron was the founder and CEO of the Waldron Search Firm and a board member of several organizations, a philanthropist, and a good friend of many of us here today. Many international boards benefited by Tom's honest, thoughtful guidance to which I can attest personally, as they include Global Partnerships, the Seattle International Foundation, the Evans School at the University of Washington, and Pro Maher, a prominent micro-lending organization based in New York. There was no job or challenge that Tom wouldn't take on himself. On the screen, you'll see an impressive list of the other global nonprofits that Tom personally worked with through his company. And the next slide shows several additional nonprofit organizations <coughs> that the company has worked with so you can begin to get a sense of the scale of what he has accomplished to support and aid our mutual passion and mission in life. He was committed, as we all are, to making the world a better and more just place. And if you were count, to count the domestic uh, organizations that he worked with, there would probably be a couple hundred more. Tom was fiercely competitive on and off the court. He loved people and in turn was loved by so many people in our community. He always managed to find a positive view in any situation. He had a great and at times mischievous sense of humor, was adventurous and willing to try anything, and above all, always sincere and honest. I read the tribute to Tom in uh, a few months ago at the website of Waldron, and it spoke so beautifully about Tom that I'm going to use a lot of that today, Melissa. We all lost a truly special mentor and friend. Tom made a unique mark on all that he touched. He touched us with his humor, his innovative energy, creativity, his wicked sense of humor, his generous spirit, empathy, and compassion. There is nothing that uh, Tom didn't put in that was all of himself. He participated in and the, the organization benefited greatly from his ever fresh perspective. And it was always important for Tom to stay in front. He was constantly reading and researching and connecting with those people that he admired. He it was challenging the status quo, and he was feeding his intellectual curiosity. And this all translated to all aspects of his life, whether he was a loving father, an adoring spouse, a great business partner, an avid golfer, tennis player, trusted friend, counselor, a philanthropist, or simply just being a good man. Tom embraced people from all walks of life, all cultures, races, gender orientations, and socioeconomic backgrounds. He did this both in his work and his volunteerism. He impacted virtually every community issue as well as national and global efforts to improve health and eliminate poverty. 
his core values have been expressed through his work. And we have all benefited from, from this. He got great leaders together. He had uh, leadership diversity in public and private and social sectors. And that is something that he was very proud of. He always sought outcomes that were in alignment with his strong values. This is part of the legacy that he leaves now. <coughs> Tom, you have touched us all, and you have made us better from your association. We thank you, we love you, and we miss you, and we carry on the impact work that we shared and love. So, to Tom Waldron, a wonderful man who we do surely miss, and we, we present the 2017 Global Hero Award. And to his loving wife, Pam, who is here representing the family, and uh, all of you, we extend our fondest love and wishes. And Brother Dennis is going to come up and accept the award. Thank you. My name is Michelle Fricks, and I am Chief of Staff at the Seattle Foundation and Interim CEO at the Seattle International Foundation, where I have the pleasure of working with Bill and Paula Clapp, and actually had the great pleasure of working with Tom Waldron when he served on our board. And I, too, have very fond memories of board meetings and conversations about our global work, and also just opportunities to be personally mentored by him and coached by him, and he was always... Um, a very helpful person in that regard, and I know I'm not alone in, in saying that I've been touched personally by his legacy and deeply appreciate his family being here to accept this award, and thank you, Bill and Paula, for, for providing it. Um, it's now my great honor to introduce another amazing global hero and personal shiro of mine, Dr. Ayla Murabit, and she, as she shared in her TED Talk recently, which I really hung on to, she works every day to amplify the voices of women, to highlight their experiences, and to help bring them to the table to be heard, especially in peace-building processes. Dr. Muribet is a medical doctor, founder of the Voice of Libyan Women, and an advocate for the Sustainable Development Goals appointed by the UN Secretary General. She's also a UN High-Level Commissioner on Health and Economic Growth, I just learned that she is one of the youngest to ever be appointed to that position, and I am so incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to meet her today. She has numerous awards and recognitions, too many to list right now, but two that I found particularly inspiring. She was just named as a 2017 Forbes 30 Under 30, and also was the youngest person ever named for the 2017 Woman Inspiring Change by Harvard Law. She went to school in Saskatoon, Canada, and moved, um, moved from Libya at the age of 15 when she enrolled in medical school. At the age of 21, she founded the Voice of Libyan Women and championed women's participation in conflict mediation and peace building. She also serves on the board of the Malala Fund, International Alert, Keeping Children Safe, and Malaria No More. In addition to her medical degree, she completed a master's in international strategy and diplomacy with distinction at the London School of Economics. She is known for her vocal leadership in global policy and in elevating the role of women, particularly young women, on global platforms. I think that is in particularly especially important right now in our history, not only in our country, but abroad. She is such an inspiration to me and has a powerful message so fitting with Global Washington's theme of renewing global leadership. So please help and join me in welcoming Dr. Ayla Murabet to the stage. I get to be 
fortune of having you guys immediately after lunch before the fatigue sets in. So this is perfect. Um, you'll notice I am not going to use the podium. That's because when I stand behind a podium, everybody can tell that I am only 5'2". Um, and it's just not a good look for any of us. So I have actually wanted to come to Seattle for a very long time. Now I know many of you, after that wonderful introduction, are going to lose a little bit of respect for me when I tell this story, and I'm okay with it. When I was in high school, something called Grey's Anatomy came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see it dimming in your eyes right now. And uh, the thing about Grey's Anatomy is my father is a surgeon and my sister is a plastic surgeon, my oldest sister. I'm one of 11 kids, just full disclosure. And my oldest sister is basically the epitome of the perfect child. Like I know all parents say we love our oldest because they're our first, they grew with us, da da da. My parents never said this, but their actions definitely did. And to be honest, she's so wonderful, she would be my favorite too, so I don't even blame them. <laughs> But she finished high school at the age of 17 and got accepted into medical school in Canada by the age of 19. Yeah. And so while she was going through medical school, I was in high school knowing I wanted to be a doctor more than anything, and Grey's Anatomy came on. And Grey's Anatomy was in Seattle. 